Well, my next guest is Stephen Rapp, who joins me from Washington. Now, he served as the U.S. Ambassador at Large for Global Criminal Justice from 2009 to 2015, where he coordinated U.S. government support for international criminal tribunals. He also helped the United Nations gain access to tens of thousands of photos detailing the torture by Syria's Assad regime. Good to have you with us. Good to be with you on this great day. Uh, yeah, tell us about your reaction uh, to this case, this sentencing. Well, I'm, I'm extremely excited uh, and, and gratified, uh, but uh, particularly in thinking of the victims uh, who've hoped uh, uh, for justice for so long, who feel that the world has is, is turned the back on, on, on their suffering and, and have finally achieved it in this case. And, and I would note that this is, the, this is the first of many, but it's a reflection of the of, of, the, of the survivors and the evidence that they brought out of, of Syria. Uh, uh, Caesar and his 50,000 uh, photographs, uh, which have been found rock solid uh, evidence uh, by these uh, judges of, of all of these tens of thousands, of thousands of people uh, tortured to death uh, in the government facilities like the one where Rosslyn headed uh, in general intelligence. And, and then uh, uh, groups like CJA, uh, Commission for International Justice and Accountability, a, a, a non-governmental organization that I chair, uh, that with the Syrian partners has brought out a million pages of, of documents, uh, regime documents, that show the orders uh, by which uh, this machinery of murder was, was set and, and kept in motion. Yeah, I mean, you, your organization helped, uh, as you say, deliver some of the evidence in this case, uh, evidence that has been collected over nearly a decade. Uh, but in terms of the significance of the case, it can't be overstated, can it, that this is the first conviction in history for murder and torture under a regime that's still in power. That's remarkable. I mean, I prosecuted at the Rwanda Tribunal and at the, it was the chief prosecutor at the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Uh, but we were dealing with crimes that had already been committed uh, where we had uh, uh, the cooperation of, of, of governments in, in helping us uh, locate the evidence. So this case had to be built from the bottom up. But it's a real credit to the uh, to the German authorities uh, because uh, uh, they take more seriously, I think, than, than any country in the world, uh, uh, the, the, the words uh, never again. And, uh, and by their investigation, by their close working uh, with the victims, with the survivors, uh, with the uh, uh, the NGO investigators and now also with those at the UN at the new international mechanism in Geneva and elsewhere, uh, these uh, uh, they're, they're able to build these cases. And, and, and I think we can see this happening uh, elsewhere, no matter what uh, Russia and China uh, are able to block in the Security Council of the UN. And as you said, this this could be the first of, of many similar cases. Uh, in this case, the colonel was found guilty of more than 4,000 counts of torture, dozens of counts of, of murder, and a few cases of, of sexual assault. Uh, how much did uh, this case rely on the testimony of survivors, some of which we just heard uh, Jamada speaking to? And uh, do we know about what sort of help they're getting now? Well, uh, the, it, it relied on those survivors. And keep in mind that one of the reasons that Germany had this case is it has 800,000 survivors of the horrors of, uh, of, of Syria. And when we talk about the refugee crisis uh, and we recognize Germany for, for taking in 800,000 refugees, it was because of these crimes uh, that people were driven to, to leave uh, hearth and home and, and brave, uh, you know, dangerous seas and hostile borders uh, 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 to come uh, uh, to Europe and, and elsewhere. And, and thus, it's entirely appropriate that, that Germany investigate, uh, uh, give uh, justice to the people that they've admitted, send a message to those back in, in, in Syria uh, that if you commit these crimes, uh, uh, there, there are going to be consequences. And I think uh, really establish a, a rule that, uh, that may prevent such crimes in, in, in the future. Um, so I think it's a, it's a powerful message. I think one of the most important ones is uh, that even while some talk about normalization, because uh, uh, UAE and Bahrain, for instance, have established diplomatic relations uh, and uh, exchanged ambassadors with Damascus. Uh, there really can be no normalization with this with this, with this regime, uh, mm, yeah. because this sends the message: no matter what, <laughs> you know, if if you try to uh, 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 to step outside uh, the country that you've devastated, uh, uh, you can you can face justice like just just like Raslin did. And, and yeah, I want to ask you about that, um, because we did hear from one of the survivors in Jemima's piece uh, talking about uh, it, it, these crimes were committed by the entire regime. What does this mean for the Assad regime? Well, uh, keep in mind that the, the, the judges, of course, convicted Rosslyn today, but it was of crimes against humanity. And, 
as, as my friend Anwar al Buni said, uh, you don't, no one person doesn't commit a crime against humanity. Uh, mm. It has to be part of a systematic or widespread attack. And, and so the judges found in this case, as they did in the, in the case of the co-defendant, that this government was indeed engaging in, in a machinery of, of, of torture and, and, and murder. And we have obviously the, the specific uh, deaths here, the, the 60 people while, while Raslin was in charge of interrogation, the 4,000 people that he, uh, uh, that he um, uh, tortured or was responsible for. Uh, but the, the Caesar photos uh, show you know, 7,000 individual victims uh, tortured in this facility and others just through uh, August of 2013. And we had a grave digger uh, who testified uh, in the trial in, in September of yeah. 2020 who continued to, to, to dig uh, mass graves and on the orders of the regime yeah. until he was able to get out of Syria at the end of 2017. So tens of thousands of others are, are, have ended up in the same fate. Uh, yeah. One group, a Syrian group, because we have 123,000 missing. Sadly, many of those people are in those mass graves and the yeah. Syrian regime refuses to tell us anything about it. So there can't be normalization. Uh, Stephen Rapp, a really good conversation. We'll have to leave it there for now, but uh, well done to you and your organization for uh, documenting uh, these war crimes. Thanks so much. Thank you.